Yes, you can plug your Steam Deck to a TV. You can even plug it to a computer monitor if so desired. It's about as simple as it gets, but there are some interesting quirks that you have to consider because not every screen is made equally and not every dock is made equal either. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 14. You know, I can't believe it took this long to talk about docking the Steam Deck. Like, okay, I get it, most people are going to use their Steam Deck as a portable gaming system and not as a docked console. But it is worth mentioning because docking is important. So to ultimately dock your Steam Deck, you will first need to obtain a dock of some sort. The Steam Deck does not come with a dock of its own. Valve does sell an official Steam Deck dock. The official Valve dock plugs in via Type-C and it features HDMI 2.0, power in, gigabit ethernet, three USB 3.1 ports, and a display port port. More specifically, display port 1.4. The dock even comes with an extra power cable. Using this dock is pretty simple. Just plug the dock into your Steam Deck, plug the power into the dock, and then plug up your display into the dock. You can also plug up any additional USB peripherals, like a mouse and keyboard, or perhaps another controller. That's how you set up the official Valve dock. There are many other docks that are set up in a similar fashion. For example, this RGB JSOX dock, it has more plugs for more peripherals. It is a bit more expensive than the official Valve dock, but it is adjustable, allowing you to fit more than just the Steam Deck. JSOX also sells a different type of dock as well. This dock plugs in directly to the wall and has an HDMI port embedded, meaning you don't need a docking station. You can just plug your Steam Deck directly into this charger and then plug an accessory and then plug your display into it. The only real limitation, of course, is that it's HDMI only, no display port. That said, most docks will serve you well, but not all docks are built equally. Some docks are incredibly cheap, much cheaper than the official Steam Deck dock, but they only support 4K 30Hz, which is basically a no-go because I have a 4K TV, and even though most games won't hit 4K 60Hz, I'd like to have 60Hz available at least. Some docks have unique features, such as an NVMe slot. You know, an NVMe slot would be very beneficial. Like you dock your Steam Deck and all of a sudden you have access to extra games that you have installed. I do like NVMe docks, but they are more expensive than your average dock, unfortunately. You can also use laptop dongles as well, but laptop dongles aren't the best option because there's no place to situate your Steam Deck. You kind of either just lay it on the table flat or you have like a separate stand, which kind of defeats the purpose, just get a dock. These laptop dongles are useful in a pinch, say you want to copy files to and from a Steam Deck. Well, it's useful in that regard, but I really wouldn't use it for hooking it up to an external display, for a Steam Deck at least. Before we talk about the actual docking experience, if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife will let the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. So if everything was plugged in correctly, you know, you plug your Steam Deck into the dock, the dock into power, the dock into an external display, then it should just output to a display. The UI expands just a little bit, but on top of this, you have additional settings. If you go to settings and display, you'll see you have additional settings for external displays. Three different options, automatically set resolution, automatically scale user interface, and automatically scale image. Automatically set resolution automatically sets the resolution, it's just as it says. So when you disable it, you have the option to change your resolution manually. You can change it from a number of different settings. You can change the resolution and you can also change the refresh rate. So as you can see here, when plugged into my capture card, I have access to all of these resolutions and all of these refresh rates. By default, this capture card can only record up to 4K 60, but you have additional resolution options with higher refresh rates in case you have a high refresh rate monitor. Like for example here, I can lower it down to 1440p and I can output up to 144Hz. Outside of those scenarios, it's a safe bet to automatically set resolution. Next is automatically scale user interface. With this option, you can change the size of text and also display more content. As you can see here, I've made the text as small as possible, but it's practically unreadable. You can also make the text huge, but I wouldn't recommend that either. I think you should just leave it in the middle and then also turn on automatically scale user interface because there's no real reason to tinker with this unless you have a hard time reading. And finally, automatically scale image. 
This is more relevant for TVs with overscan. If you have a TV with a healthy amount of overscan, then you can disable this option and then change it to fit all of your elements. Computer monitors typically don't have overscan issues, but sometimes TVs do, so it does make sense to turn this off and then change the scale as needed. You can also enable and disable HDR. Yes, this includes the LCD Steam Deck. You know, the LCD Steam Deck that doesn't have HDR in its main display. You can plug that into an external display that supports HDR. So yes, you have all of these extra options. So you can just go into a game and play it, right? Well... When you boot into a game and you check out the game's in-game resolution settings, you'll see that, in fact, it's limited to 720p. Yes, even plugged into a 4K display. Which on one hand, yes, that makes sense. The Steam Deck isn't a 4K gaming machine. It's primarily made for 800p gaming. But if you're playing a game that could probably benefit from a resolution bump, you know, like an indie game that can still run at 60fps at 4K, then it is possible to have the game run at 4K. So in this example, I'm plugged into a 4K display. And our game of choice is Ender Magnolia, Bloom in the Mist. You know, the last time we did a video about resolution, we featured the previous game, Ender Lily's Quietest of the Nights. So yes, despite being on a 4K display, I am in fact limited to 720p resolutions in this game. This, of course, can be remedied fairly easily. So assuming that you're actually running it at 4K resolution, it's fairly simple. All you need to do is go into the game, click on the cogwheel, and go into the game properties. And here you'll see an option for game resolution. By default, it's on default resolution. For most AAA titles, it's recommended that you leave them at default, but for indie games like this one, you can take it to native. Native will automatically match the resolution of whatever display you're plugged into. So in this case, yes, a 4K display, but if you were plugged into a 1080p display, then it would match 1080p instead. So why don't we go ahead and load up the game? And as you can see here, once you go into settings, go in the video, you'll see you have a plethora of resolution options, including the all-important 4K resolution. So as you can see here, the game runs pretty well at 4K, though it doesn't run at a solid 60fps. This is likely due to the fact that this is an early access title. It runs at like 40 to 47 fps. I wouldn't run this game on the Steam Deck at 4K, but you could definitely lower the resolution down to say, I don't know, 1440p? It's a lot more playable that way. On the Steam Deck, you could easily hit 1080p 60fps with this title. You could probably go above to 90fps if so desired. It is important to note that Ender Magnolia is in fact in early access, so when the game fully releases, it may run a lot better. No guarantees, but I mean it's very playable even at 1440p instead of 4K. So that about covers docking in game mode, but how is docking in desktop mode? Well, docking in desktop mode is a very different beast because, essentially, if your dock has multiple display outputs, then you can output to multiple different displays. This does mean the Steam Deck has a place as a sort of workstation. With a mouse and keyboard, you could do a lot of the things that you need to do. Need to type up an essay? You can do that. Heck, some claim to be able to video edit on the Steam Deck. It does sound really cool, and at a pinch, I guess you could do it, but like, I'm not gonna do it. I've already got myself a pretty nice editing station, so I don't feel the need to have to do any productive work on my Steam Deck. Could I cover productivity on the Steam Deck? I could, but it's not really a intrinsically Steam Deck thing. It's more of a Linux desktop thing as a whole. But it would be nice to see some people type up their entire doctoral thesis on a Steam Deck. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.